Please note that filming text on the whiteboard requires extremely bright studio lighting. Subsequently, sunglasses were worn during the filming of this video to prevent damage to my retinas. A note on how to use these sessions. Jot down the notes as we go, so we'll help you learn the material in a more interactive way, and you can use them as study notes later. Also, in the small chance that the discrepancy arises between the professor's notes and mine, always go with your professor. They're the one grading you. Lastly, any examples or analogies used in the session are not meant to support or criticize politics, religion, or lifestyle. They're merely learning tools to help understand the material. All right, guys and girls, it's time to get cracking. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about organometallics. And this is going to be an awesome chapter, you guys, because this is where we're finally getting to the heart of organic chemistry. Why do I say that? Well, hey, do you guys remember what we said organic chemistry was the study of? Well, organic chemistry, organic means carbon compounds, right? So organic chemistry was the study of carbon compounds. Why organometallics is so important to this study is because organometallics gives us a way of making carbon-carbon bonds. It gives us a way of sticking one carbon together with another carbon and making a bond between those carbons. And whenever you can make a bond between two carbons, whenever you can make a carbon-carbon bond, this is huge in organic chemistry. Whenever you can make a carbon-carbon bond, this is crucial for developing new drugs, new materials, new polymers, new fibers. Okay, so whenever you can make a carbon-carbon bond, this is a really big deal. So that's why organometallics is the heart of organic chemistry. We use this all the time, okay? So hey, let's go ahead and get started making these carbon-carbon bonds. Okay, so I told you that organometallics, the whole reason why these are so important is because they give us a way of making carbon-carbon bonds. So I went ahead and drew this up in green here for you just to make sure you understand that the whole point of today, the whole point of learning organometallics is to learn how to make carbon-carbon bonds, okay? Okay, so first things first, you guys. What is an organometallic? Well, hey, let's break it down by its name. Organo, this means organic group, and we know what an organic group is, right? A carbon group, a carbon compound. So organo, this is carbon compound. Metallic, this means metal. So all this means is organo, a carbon group with a metal stuck onto it. Okay, so don't let its name fool you guys. This is pretty simple. It's just saying an organic group, a carbon group with a metal stuck onto it. Okay, so I'm gonna let you in on the strategy behind organometallics. How do we use these to make carbon-carbon bonds? Well, a whole strategy behind organometallics is to make a carbon into a nucleophile. So they wanna make a carbon into a nucleophile and have that carbon attack another carbon electrophile. So organometallics, this is gonna make one carbon into a nucleophile so it can do an SN2 reaction and attack another carbon electrophile. So you can stick those two carbons together. Okay, so the strategy behind organometallics is to stick a metal onto a carbon compound, make that carbon compound into a nucleophile so it can then do an SN2 reaction or a nucleophilic some kind of reaction onto another carbon to form a carbon-carbon bond. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, write this up here that the whole strategy behind organometallics is to make a carbon into a nucleophile. So you can then use that carbon that you've made into a nucleophile to do a substitution reaction on another carbon and stick those two carbons together, make a carbon-carbon bond between those two. Okay, so what we want to do with organometallics is to take a metal, stick it onto a carbon compound to make that carbon compound into a nucleophile, to make that carbon into a nucleophile. So it can then do an SN2 reaction or some kind of nucleophilic reaction on another carbon, okay? This process of making something into a nucleophile isn't anything new. You guys, we've seen this before. Remember back to the alcohols chapter. We showed you alcohols like this 
And we said, hey, let's make this alcohol, let's make this oxygen into a nucleophile so we can do a nucleophilic reaction, okay? So do you guys remember how we turned this alcohol, turn this oxygen into a nucleophile? Well, all we did was throw in some base, some base to come and deprotonate this oxygen. So deprotonate this, take off that hydrogen and kick these electrons onto this oxygen, giving that oxygen more electrons. And this turned that alcohol, the oxygen of that alcohol, into a nucleophile. Because now it has more lone pairs, it's got a negative charge, it's really electron rich, okay? So this is now really a good nucleophile ready to do a SN2 reaction or some kind of nucleophilic reaction, okay? So we've seen this process before, before of making something into a nucleophile. This is nothing new. I'm just gonna be showing you how to apply this concept to making a carbon into a nucleophile. We're not gonna deprotonate a carbon to make it into a nucleophile like we did with alcohols. We're going to attach a metal to these carbon compounds to make them into nucleophiles, okay? But this concept, we've seen it before. We're just gonna be applying it to carbons now, to make carbons into nucleophiles. Okay, so when it comes to organometallics, there are three types of organometallics that we use to make carbons into nucleophiles. These are Grignards, organolithiums, and organocuprates. For these two right here, it should be fairly obvious what metal we're gonna be attaching to the organic group, to the carbon group. Okay, so remember, organometallics, this is just sticking a metal onto a carbon compound. So hey, you guys, what do you think, which metal do you think we're gonna be using for organolithiums? What metal do you think we're gonna be sticking onto this organic compound, an organolithium? Lithium, right? Okay, so that's pretty obvious. Organolithiums use lithium metal. What about for organocuprates? What metal are you gonna be sticking onto this carbon group? A cooper, a copper. Okay, so this doesn't sound exactly like it, but cuprate, this is copper. Stick a copper onto an organocuprate. Okay, so organolithiums, organocuprates, pretty obvious. Use lithium and copper. But hey, what about this one that's called Grignard? What kind of metal are we going to use to stick onto an organo group in this organometallic? Okay, so this one's not so obvious. Another name for a Grignard, though, is organomagnesium. Let's go ahead and write that down. That the other name for Grignards, these are organomagnesium. So hey, when we write out this other name for Grignards, then it's pretty obvious what metal we're gonna be using to stick onto this organo group, or organic group, right? We're gonna be using magnesium, okay? So there's three metals that we're gonna be using to make organometallics. Magnesium, lithium, and copper. Victor Grignard, he was the guy that first came up with organometallics, which is why he named organomagnesiums after himself. He named these as Grignards, okay? So these other two, these the people that invented these, they took it for the team and they just made it easy for us to remember by naming it organolithium and organocuprate. Just remember that Grignard, he was the one that came up with this and he started out by using magnesium in these organometallics, okay? So these are the three ways we're gonna be making carbons into nucleophiles by sticking a magnesium, a lithium, and a copper onto carbon compounds. Okay, so for each one of these organometallics, I'm gonna show you how to prep them, and then I'm gonna show you how they react, okay? So for each one of these, Grignards, organolithiums, organocuprates, first show you how to make them, how to prep them, then I'm gonna show you how they work in a reaction, okay? So let's go ahead and start out with Grignards first, and then I'll show you organolithiums and organocuprates after. Okay, so whether you're dealing with a Grignard, an organolithium, or an organocuprate, the strategy is the same. No matter what organometallic you use, all you're trying to do is make a carbon into a nucleophile by sticking a metal onto that carbon. But hey, how does sticking a metal onto a carbon make that carbon into a nucleophile? 
Well, hey, let me tell you that metals are very not electronegative, okay? So if you are electronegative, that means you're gonna be pulling as many electrons as you can towards yourself. If you are not electronegative, like metals are, okay, so if you're not electronegative, that means when you're bonded to another atom, you're gonna be pushing as many of your electrons towards that other atom as possible. You don't like electrons. If you're not electronegative, you're trying to get rid of your electrons, okay? So metals are not electronegative. Whenever they're bonded to other atoms, such as carbon, they're trying to push as many of their electrons towards the other atom as possible, okay? So check this out, for example. Just say you take this carbon compound and just say you stick a metal onto this carbon right here, okay? So this could be a magnesium, a lithium, or a copper, whatever. All I'm telling you is that metals are not electronegative. That means when metals are bonded to other atoms such as this carbon, then these electrons that are being shared between this carbon and this metal, in this bond, this metal is not electronegative, so it's gonna be pushing electrons towards the carbon that it's connected to. Okay, so metal, not electronegative. He's like, hey carbon, go ahead, take my electrons. I don't want them. So he's gonna be pushing electrons towards this carbon. And if you push negatively charged electrons towards this carbon, is that gonna make this carbon more positive, more negative, or stay the same? If you push negatively charged electrons towards this carbon, that's gonna make this carbon more negative, right? So you could put a partial negative there if you want. This is gonna make this carbon ne more negative and more electron rich. And hey, you guys, what is a nucleophile? A nucleophile is just an atom that's electron rich, that's negative, that's willing to share its electrons with some other atom. So this metal's giving up all its electrons to this carbon, making it partially negative, making it really electron rich, making it into a great nucleophile. So this is the strategy behind taking a metal, sticking it onto a carbon to make this carbon, make that carbon into a nucleophile. All you're doing is using this metal to make this carbon that it's connected to electron rich, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and show you Grignard's, organomagnesiums. How do we prep these and how do we use these in reaction?